Hello, everybody, and welcome to the From Poverty to Progress channel, the channel that is devoted to promoting an awareness and understanding of human progress. My name is Michael Magoon. I am the author of the From Poverty to Progress book series. The first book in this series is called From Poverty to Progress, where I explain the origins and causes of modern human progress. The second book, Promoting Progress, will be available in the spring of 2023, where I build on those ideas to argue for a new policy agenda for keeping progress going. Stay tuned to the end of this video for a free book giveaway. Today, I'm going to be starting a new series of videos about the role of ideology and its impact on the progress of the past, the present, and the future. Now, this may seem a little bit of a departure from my other videos, but I don't think it is. I think ideology plays a major role in progress, and in this video, I want to explain why. Now, throughout this series, I have been arguing for what I call the progress-based perspective, and that is that human material progress is a fact, and it has brought enormous benefits to humanity. Now, if you haven't seen my introductory videos, I would go over those first before you go into this, where I show the evidence for progress, and I'm going to have a lot more videos in the future showing evidence for the existence of progress and all the benefits it brings to humanity. But I'm not going to go into much detail here in this video. The second part of the progress-based perspective is the belief that we need to study the past to identify the causes of the progress in the past. In other words, we know progress is important, we know that it happened and it has benefited mankind, but we still don't know exactly why all of it took place. So we need to study the past to identify those causes. Why do we want to do that? Because we want to implement today more of what worked in the past and less of what did not work. So that way we can keep progress going and if possible, accelerate in the future. And above all, we need to focus relentlessly on results. Of course, we need to do it within the constraints of basic constitutional rights and human decency, but we must not let our preconceived notions get in the way of promoting progress. So if you go in a little deeper on this progress-based perspective, you can see a few key points which are closely tied with ideology. The first is, to make the world better, we must first understand the world as it actually is, not as we want it to be. Two, the most significant barrier to our understanding of the world are our own preconceived notions. It's not just about learning new facts. It's about confronting the preconceived notions that we have that came before we even learned any facts at all because those undermine our ability to promote progress today and in the future. And most importantly, ideology is the mother of all preconceived notions. For this reason, I believe, ideologies are the most significant threat to future progress because they create oversimplified views of reality based on what how things should be, not on how things actually are. And so therefore, they undermine our ability to understand the world and to implement policies that promote progress. So what we need to do is be ruthless in attacking our own preconceived notions that are incorrect, whereas ideologies want to reinforce those preconceived notions. So here I'm going to talk a little bit about the left and the right and how they tend to view progress. Now, of course, I'm going to be making some generalizations and not everyone on the left and the right agree, but I think in general, there are some very clear views that are held by members of the left and members of the right as they relate to progress. The first is that the left typically compare society to an ideological vision of what they believe society should be. So already you start to see a big departure here from the progress-based perspective, which really focuses on how society actually is, not how we want it to be. Now, the visions on the left vary greatly. There are many different ideological visions on the left, but they tend to have a few key points in common. The most important are that that vision includes universal prosperity, equality, 
and happiness. I think it would be really hard to disagree with those three things. But the question is, is the vision implementable? Can we do it in the real world? It's easy to come up with a great idea. That's the easy part. The hard part is actually implementing it in the real world. Now, I will divide the left into two key chunks. One is what I would call the center left, and then another one that I will call left wing. Uh, and those both together, I will call the left. So left wingers, and here I would include, for example, a uh, democratic socialist, a communist, critical theorist, a uh, green environmentalist. Left wingers tend to be hostile to progress because they view it as inherently unfair because the benefits are unequally distributed. Remember, the left really cares about equality. So for many of them, the fact that the benefits of progress are unequally distributed invalidates the whole concept of progress in their own mind. Many other left-wingers, particularly Greens, believe that progress is a bad thing because it's a destructive force on the natural environment. They care not so much about human prosperity, but about the natural environment. And they see any increase in prosperity from humanity as necessarily undermining the natural environment. So therefore, the green left tends to be hostile to progress. Many on the left also are hostile to progress because they think it's immoral, because it is based purely on material goods. Many on the left believe that people should be making altruistic decisions for the benefit of mankind, and they understand that a lot of progress comes from self-interested decision-making. And for them, that's bad. People should not be thinking about themselves. They should be sacrificing for humanity, not being selfish. So for them, progress is a bad thing. Many on the left also believe that progress is immoral because it further solidifies the power of the oppressors over the oppressed. And you'll find this particularly in critical theory which is the newest form of left-wing ideology. So for all of these reasons, the left wing tends to be hostile to progress. Some on the left, however, are more what I would call skeptical of progress. In other words, they like the idea of progress, but they don't really believe that it exists. So many on the left argue that progress does not exist because of increased inequality. In other words, sure, there's uh, economic growth, but the benefits are overwhelmingly going to rich people, so it doesn't really matter. Many of them also believe that progress leads to environmental destruction, and we should be more concerned about that than human progress. So they're skeptical about the whole concept. There are also many on the left who argue that progress stopped in the 1970s. They argue that between uh, World War II and the 1970s, there was tremendous progress, but then it stopped for various reasons. Others on the left say that, well, we still have problems today, so how can you just rest on your laurels and celebrate progress because we still have so many problems today? And there are also people on the left who are skeptical of progress. They say, yes, there's been progress in the past, but it's going to stop in the near future because of X. That X might be, for example, climate change. It might be running out of uh, resources. It might be overpopulation. It might be artificial intelligence. It might be a whole host of other things. So for all of these reasons, most of the people on the left are either skeptical of progress or they are hostile to progress. So now I'm going to focus on what I would call the center left. I would say the social democrats in Europe, uh, liberals in the United States, or the New Deal Democrats in the United States tend to have a specific view of progress. They tend to view progress as incremental change towards the ideological vision of the left while remaining within the framework of the Constitution, basic human rights, democracy, and capitalism. The center left believes that the way we accomplish progress is through the gradual expansion of government social spending, regulations on corporations, taxes on the wealthy, and a gradual expansion of rights. So in other words, those people on the left who do believe in progress would tend to be on the center left. They believe that progress 
comes from government policy. Now, this is very different from what I've shown in other videos. I believe that progress comes from society itself and that the government can play a role, but it's not a very big role. And in fact, more often, the government plays a negative role of undermining the preconditions for progress rather than building it up. So that's very different from the center-left view of progress. Now, the left-wing view of progress, to the extent that they believe in it, left-wingers tend to view the constraints of constitutional rights, democracy, and capitalism as deliberate interference in the achievement of social justice. In other words, the very things that the center-left wants to respect and maintain, the left-wing is opposed to. And in many cases, they're opposed to it violently. We see that particularly in communism. And in many cases, they want to violently overthrow these things and to establish a new regime that's based on equality and social justice. Now, as you can already tell, there are some pretty serious conflicts within the left, and I believe those conflicts are going to get bigger and bigger over time. But all the ideologies on the left tend to agree on the overall goal. They have a common ideological vision, which consists of prosperity, equality, and happiness. But they have serious disagreements on the best means to get there. The center left wants to essentially work within the system, wants to work within a liberal democratic capitalism. Left wingers believe that the ideological vision of social justice cannot be achieved within the constitutional order, within democracy, and within capitalism. And so they want to, in some way, overthrow it, in some cases, using violence to establish a totalitarian regime. I find it very interesting that many people on the left call themselves progressive. In other words, it comes from the word progress. But yet, it's very clear that they don't understand what progress is. And in most cases, they're either hostile to progress or they do not believe it exists. And this is kind of maddening to me. I don't know why you would choose a word like progressive that is clearly based on the term progress if you don't actually believe in that term. I would love to call myself a progressive, but I can't because that term has already been taken. So that's why I use the term progress Based perspective. I hope that the left stopped calling themselves progressive so that, that we can take that term back and use that label for our own movement. Now, I'm not going to talk a lot about the right here. I'm going to have another video on that, but I do want to go into a little bit of detail on the right's conception of progress. The right is typically skeptical of the concept of progress because it represents a change from how things used to be. In general, the right is pretty happy with the way things are. They see it as the outcome of learning by society and we need to respect tradition. And they see, in many cases, progress as a form of decline. They have often talk about moral decay or decadence. The right has a real problem with, with the concept of progress because they want to keep things how they are. They're happy with how, the, how things are, and they think that any major changes are likely to make things worse. So typically the right has a kind of what I would call a nostalgia for how things were not too long ago, usually during their childhood, and they kind of want to preserve it the way it is. They like it, and that the left represents a fundamental threat to that nostalgic world that they love. So the right typically sees progress leading to a lot of bad things. The decline of patriotism, the decline of the family and marriage, the decline of religion, decline of the work ethic, increase in drug use, increase in violence and crime. So for many conservatives, the trends that they see in the modern world are almost exclusively negative because we've gotten away from the nostalgic image that they have of the past. Now, I would argue that the past was never as good as the right believes it was and that they need to let go of these fault views just like the left does. And I will go into more detail on this in future videos. So what you can see is both the left and the right misunderstand what progress is. And I went into a lot of details in other videos on what progress is. I don't need to go into that here. They also misunderstand the causes of progress and are either skeptical of the existence of progress or they are downright opposed to it. 
So basically, no matter whether you vote for the left or the right, you're getting a group that really doesn't believe in progress or completely misunderstands it. There is no way in the current system, whether it's in the United States or in Europe or any other democratic society, to vote in favor of progress because there is no ideology that is based on progress. I want to change that. I believe that we need a third view, a third view that is between the left and the right, that is based on a progress-based perspective, and that rejects the fundamental tenets of both the left and the right. So it's not just a question of compromising between the two. It's about showing an entirely different perspective, a perspective that is both pragmatic and that is radical. And above all, a perspective that is result-oriented. In other words, we get things done. And that ultimately is what matters, not about what you believe, but about what you can do. Well, you've gotten to the end of this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, don't forget to subscribe and like. If you'd like more resources, I would recommend going to my author website, fronpovertytoprogress.com. With a free email subscription, you get free ebook samples, free audio samples, and discounted prices on ebooks and audiobooks. If you insist on paying full price, you can purchase my books at Amazon and Ingram Spark or audiobooks at Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. If you would like to go into more detail on the concept of progress, I would recommend my library of online book summaries at techratchet.com, which consists of about 280 book summaries on technology, history, economic growth, and progress. So you got to the end of the video. Now it's time for the free book giveaway. I am giving away a digital copy of my first book, From Poverty to Progress. Now, the rules are the same. You know what they are. If you don't know what they are, please pause and read this description. We have a book giveaway every week. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next time.